China is currently undertaking the construction of the world's largest water diversion project, a monumental effort aimed at challenging the forces of nature itself. Spanning thousands of kilometers, this ambitious initiative involves the creation of artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels that traverse littoral mountains. The primary objective is to channel fresh water to the industrial hubs in the northern regions of the country. In this video, we delve into the intricacies of China's South to North Water Diversion Project, exploring how much it costs, why they're doing it, its effects on the environment, and how exactly it will or will not benefit the Chinese people. This initiative has sparked controversy, prompting a closer examination of its multifaceted aspects. Throughout its history, China has grappled with the dual aspects of its geographical blessings and challenges. The west-to-east flow of the Yangtze and Yellow River systems has historically rendered much of eastern China habitable for millennia. The fertile flood plains, fostering sustenance almost year-round, have supported the continuous growth of Chinese civilization. Indeed, China's Yellow River Valley stands as one of the largest and consistently cultivated expanses of arable land worldwide. In contrast, the northern and far western regions present a challenging landscape characterized by either aridity or formidable mountainous terrain. From the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts in the north to the imposing Himalayas and Tibetan Plateau in the west, much of China's northwest expanse remains sparsely populated and unsuitable for agricultural pursuits. This geographical divide is underscored by a significant statistic a striking 94% of China's population resides east of an imaginary line that distinctly separates the country into two contrasting halves. Historically, Beijing and its surrounding northern cities were key hubs for population, agriculture, and trade. However, in the mid-20th century, China's unprecedented growth strained vital resources like water in the region. Northern cities, including Beijing, heavily relied on groundwater, but urban and industrial demands quickly overexploited this limited freshwater source. Compounding the issue, the nearby Gobi Desert in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region expanded, bringing more frequent dust and sandstorms. At least 409 million people in China have been affected by a severe sandstorm that hit the country from Monday. Now, northern China is experiencing the highest number of sandstorms in a decade, up to 3,600 square kilometers, roughly twice the size of the country Malta, falls victim to desertification each year, a consequence of human activities like deforestation, climate change, and the depletion of underground water sources. By the early 1950s, the looming water scarcity crisis in northern China became apparent with growing cities and diminishing water resources. Faced with the challenge of sustaining a historically arid region and its burgeoning population, China sought innovative solutions. In 1952, Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, proposed a solution, transferring water from the water-rich south to the arid northern regions. After 50 years of planning and research, Mao's vision gained approval from the country's state council in 2002. This monumental initiative was officially named the South North Water Transfer Project. It entailed the construction of an extensive network of aqueducts, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams designed to transport fresh water from the water-abundant south to the water-scarce north. The project comprised three major canal systems referred to as the Eastern, Central, and Western routes. Originating near the city of Yangzhou, the Eastern route commences its journey through a significant Yangtze River branch. A formidable but advanced pumping station propels water onto the Jinghang Grand Canal, recognized as the world's longest artificial waterway. The water then traverses an underground tunnel beneath the Yellow River. Subsequently, a network of aqueducts directs the water toward Tianjin, a coastal city bordering the northwest of Beijing. This segment of the project spans over 1100 gem, 
Although construction began in 2002 with initial expectations of delivering fresh water by 2013, persistent delays extended this timeline by over four years. Finally, by 2017, approximately 1 billion cubic meters of fresh water annually reached Tianjin, directly benefiting a population of around 10 million in the city. In contrast to the pre-existing infrastructure of the Eastern Route, the Central Route faced unique challenges as it lacked suitable channels for diverting water. Originating at the Danjiangku Reservoir, the Central Route necessitated elevating the Danjiang Dam by up to 15 meters to facilitate the downstream flow of water toward the north. This elevation eliminated the need for pumping stations, enabling the water to traverse canals and aqueducts seamlessly. However, this modification led to the relocation of over 300,000 residents in Hubei and Heman to make way for the expanded reservoir and canals. The remainder of the central route comprises artificial canals and aqueducts forming a network of elevated and underground water passages across the Chinese central plain. Notably, the Shea Aqueduct spans over 12 kilometers above the Shea River. The journey culminates in Beijing, the nation's capital, with the central route completing construction in 2014, extending over 1,200 gem. Post-completion, approximately one-third of the water that previously flowed through the Han River was redirected, posing challenges for the millions relying on the Han for fresh water. In July 2022, the Chinese government revealed plans for an ambitious underground tunnel stretching one kilometer below the surface. This tunnel, connecting the Three Gorges Dam to the Han River and the central route leading to Beijing, aims to be the longest and deepest artificial waterway upon completion by 2030. The central route is projected to transfer approximately 12 cubic kilometers of water annually, constituting about one-third of the Three Gorges Dam's total reservoir capacity. In contrast, the western route of the South North Water Transfer Project is still in the planning stage and presents the most significant construction challenge among the three routes. The proposed plan involves creating waterways and tunnels to link the Yangtze River to the Yellow River through the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, situated 3 to 5 kilometers above sea level. The daunting topography and climate in this region pose considerable challenges, requiring engineers to carve through mountains to navigate the difficult terrain. The western route is estimated to be completed by the year 2050. Once completed, the route is estimated to bring as much as 17 cubic kilometers per year of fresh water to northern Chinese provinces. If the western route was to be completed, it could serve a combined population of nearly 100 million people along its track. There have also been unofficial plans in the past for the western route to divert water from transboundary rivers that originate from China, such as the Brahmaputra and Mekong rivers that pass through India and Southeast Asia, respectively. Although this has never been the official plan for the project, India has raised concern in the past over China's possible exploits on the Brahmaputra. They worried that China's ability to manipulate the river's flow is a cause for concern for the Indian government. For the Chinese government, on the other hand, the South North Water Transfer Project, even though it has not been fully completed, is already proving to be a huge success. According to Chinese state media, the project benefits as much as 140 million Chinese citizens in water-starved regions. However, local and provincial Chinese governments all have different opinions on the project. While the South North Water Transfer Project has brought benefits to some northern Chinese cities, it has sparked considerable concerns among local and international environmentalists. The project, comprising artificial waterways that defy the natural west-to-east flow of China's rivers, has disrupted hundreds of natural rivers, causing some to dry up entirely. The massive scale of water transfer has led to the disappearance of 600 rivers during the project's construction. Moreover, the artificial rivers have inadvertently become conduits for industrial waste and sewage. In the central route, originating at the Danjiangku Reservoir 
industrial cities like Sion discharge their waste into the Han River, which then flows into the reservoir and eventually to the central route serving Beijing. Given that these artificial waterways pass through numerous cities and villages, many indiscriminately dispose of their waste into these channels. The lack of water treatment facilities along the project's path exacerbates the environmental impact. One alarming consequence was the 36% reduction in the Yanks River's natural flow during the opening of the central route, raising concerns among experts about potential backflow of seawater from the Yellow Sea into the local water supplies of coastal Chinese cities. As the Yangtze's flow decreases due to water diversion into artificial rivers, the risk of saltwater intrusion from the Yellow Sea threatens a potential nationwide water crisis. Environmental concerns, including potential landslides and seismic activity, have hindered the planning of the western route. The Qinghai Tibet Plateau seismic activity poses a substantial financial risk, with potential earthquake damage estimated in the billions. Despite completing two of the three planned routes, the South North Water Transfer Project has incurred significant financial, environmental, social, and economic costs. In total, the entire project's cost is estimated to be around $62 billion USD. This price tag doesn't even account for the billions of dollars the Chinese government would soon need to maintain more than 3,000 kilometers of the project. Despite the substantial financial investment, the South North Water Transfer Project has not fully achieved its initial aim of providing clean water to northern China. What are your opinions on this initiative? Do you believe the project's benefits justify its environmental costs? And do you think the construction of the Western Route is still a viable and necessary endeavor? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Well, I'm sure you're going to love to watch our video about the 5 billion China Nepal Railway across the Himalayas on our channel. Make sure to subscribe to us and never miss our amazing videos like this. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned.